the Panama Canal, a true engine for navigation and the global economy. This waterway has become a genuine geopolitical diamond. Thanks to the Panama Canal, ships no longer need to navigate around South America, shortening the route from New York to San Francisco by a whopping 13,000 kilometers. The history of this venture dates back to the 16th century when daring sailors dreamt of connecting two oceans. However, King Philip II of Spain literally put a cross on such ideas, stating, what God has joined, man should not separate. In the early 19th century, in 1814, Spain surrendered and passed a law for the construction of an interoceanic canal. Later, in 1825, the Central American states also expressed their support for this endeavor. The United States joined this excitement after the California Gold Rush in 1848. The clayton bulwer Treaty, signed with Nicaragua in 1848, granted the U.S. exclusive rights to build interoceanic pathways. Nicaragua, after the Mexican-American War, became part of American attention. However, Britain decided to pour cold water on the situation and signed the clayton bulwer Treaty with the U.S. in 1850 to regulate the issue of joint canal management in Central America. They agreed not to interfere with each other. Throughout the 19th century, two options for canal construction were discussed through Nicaragua and through Panama. While the U.S. was contemplating the Nicaraguan option, the French became interested in the Panamanian idea. In 1879, under the leadership of Ferdinand de Lesseps, the man behind the Suez Canal, the Universal Interoceanic Canal Company was formed. This company actively sold shares, and in the shortest time, the number of shareholders reached 800,000. The idea of building a sea-level canal seemed tempting, but in 1887, it had to be abandoned due to a lack of funds. And that's where the problems began. On December 14, 1888, the company stopped payments and then halted construction altogether. Reasons? The wrong project, overspending on maintaining interest in the press and parliament, and only a third of the budget went to actual construction. The tragedy occurred in 1889, marking the beginning of the Panama Scandal. In 1892, an investigation began, revealing that the company was bribing influential figures, parliamentarians, and press representatives. The case exposed that important politicians were taking bribes for allowing illegal actions, leading to the company's collapse and the bankruptcy of hundreds of thousands of investors. The creator of the Eiffel Tower, by the way, was among the accused. Both Lesseps and Gustave Eiffel were convicted of fraud, mismanagement, and wasteful use of funds. Lesseps, surviving the stress of the trial, died shortly afterward. Despite these difficulties, the idea of the canal did not fade. The Spanish-American War only increased the U.S.'s interest in the Isthmian construction, strengthening their position in the Western Hemisphere. In 1899, the U.S. established a commission for the canal's construction, and in 1901, they signed the hay ponce Fault Treaty, obtaining the exclusive right to build the canal without British involvement. Essentially, the canal was supposed to be neutral, guaranteeing the free passage of any ship from any country through the canal. However, all this was shattered by an American reservation that these provisions would not apply to measures the U.S. deemed necessary to protect Panama and the Interoceanic Canal. To start construction, Americans needed to resolve the issue of purchasing the concession for the construction of the Panama Canal from the French company. To lower the price, the U.S. Congress Commission initially expressed support for the Nicaraguan direction, and on January 9, 1902, the Hepburn Bill was passed. Impressed by this, the French agreed in June 1902 to sell the concession, completed works and significant equipment for $40 million. After that, the Americans repealed the Hepburn Bill and settled the matter in favor of the Panama Canal. 
On June 28, 1902, the U.S. Congress passed a law requiring the President of the United States to acquire the property of the Canal Construction Company, the Panama Railway Company's shares, and a strip of land from Colombia, 10 miles wide, for the construction, maintenance, and operation of the canal with jurisdiction over the mentioned territory. Several months after this, on January 22, 1903, the Colombian ambassador Thomas Heron and the U.S. Secretary of State John Hay signed a treaty. According to this treaty, Colombia leased a strip of land to the United States for the construction of the Panama Canal for a period of a hundred years. In exchange for Colombia's government sanction, which owned the territory of Panama, the U.S. agreed to pay a one-time fee of $10 million. Additionally, after nine years, they would pay Colombia an annual sum of $250,000 while maintaining Colombia's sovereignty over the Panama Canal Zone. The Hay-Heron Treaty confirmed that all these conditions were formalized, but the Colombian Senate refused to ratify it. This was because the concession agreement with the French company was expiring in 1904, and according to its terms, if the canal did not start operating by then, which was certain, all structures built by the company would transfer gratuitously to Colombia. They could not have known what consequences this refusal would lead to, but what happened next was certainly not part of their plans. The only way out for the U.S. and France was the separation of the state of Panama from Colombia. After that, independent Panama could independently formalize the legal transfer of the concession to the U.S. The Frenchman Bonau Varilla organized and led the separatist movement. With direct intervention from the U.S. military fleet, he carried out the separation of Panama on November 4, 1903. On November 18, on behalf of the independent Panamanian Republic, he signed a treaty with the U.S. following the model of the Hay-Heron Treaty. The conflict between the U.S. and Colombia was only resolved in 1921, and I will tell you about it some other time. Under the 1903 treaty, the U.S. essentially assumed full guardianship over the new independent republic. They became the guarantor of Panama's independence and also gained the right to intervene in maintaining order in the republic if it could not handle it independently. The construction began under the auspices of the U.S. Department of Defense. Remembering the first unsuccessful attempt at construction, Americans did not take risks. Since it was already known that yellow fever is transmitted through mosquito bites, they sent a large expedition led by William Crawford Gorgas, consisting of 1,500 people. Their task was to clear and burn 30 square kilometers of shrubs and small trees, mow and burn grass of the same area, drain 80 hectares of swamps, dig 76 kilometers of drainage canals, and restore 600 kilometers of old trenches. They also sprayed 150,000 gallons of oil to destroy mosquito larvae and breeding grounds. They succeeded in their task and it yielded results. The prevalence of yellow fever and malaria decreased to the point where these diseases ceased to be a hindering factor. In 1904, the U.S. Department of Defense began the construction of the canal. The chief engineer was John Frank Stevens. His attention to detail, engineering expertise, and ability to efficiently manage complex projects had a positive impact on the project planning, and it turned out to be successful. They opted for locks and lakes. The construction took 10 years, cost $400 million, and involved 70,000 workers, of whom 5,600 lost their lives during the construction. On October 13, 1913, President of the United States, Thomas Wilson, in the presence of numerous high-ranking guests, approached a special table and pressed a gilded button. In that instant, 2,000 miles from the White House, a powerful explosion shook the tropical air. 20,000 kilograms of dynamite destroyed the last barrier near the city of Gamboa, separating the waters of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. With the explosion of the last barrier on October 13, 1913, the Panama Canal officially opened its gates to global navigation. This marvel of engineering and technical mastery 
provided ships with a short and convenient route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, reducing the journey from New York to San Francisco by 13,000 kilometers. The system of locks and artificial lakes put into operation allowed vessels to be lifted, overcoming the difference in water levels between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. John Frank Stevens effectively addressed complex engineering challenges, making construction feasible and efficient. Since the opening of the Panama Canal, it has become a key element in global trade and navigation, offering faster and more cost-effective transit for ships of all nationalities. By owning the canal, the United States also affirmed its geopolitical role in the region and the world. After the successful construction and opening of the Panama Canal in 1913, it became evident that the growth of global shipping necessitated the expansion of the canal to facilitate more efficient movement of modern larger vessels. This challenge was recognized, and in 2007 the project to expand the canal, known as the Panama Canal Expansion Project, or simply the New Locks, began. The main idea of the project was to create new, more spacious locks, capable of accommodating vessels with much larger cargo capacity. The new locks were built alongside the existing ones, and work was also done to widen and deepen certain sections of the canal. The project was completed in 2016, and now the Panama Canal is capable of accommodating new Panamax-class vessels, which have significantly greater cargo-carrying capabilities. This upgrade not only increased the canal's capacity, but also made it more competitive and adapted to the modern requirements of global trade. Due to global warming, in 2023, the Panama Canal experienced significant shallowing due to severe drought leading the administration to impose strict restrictions on navigation. At the moment, this canal is the only option, and there is no alternative route. The only alternative was in Nicaragua, where the National Assembly approved a new canal construction project in 2013 as an alternative to the Panama Canal. Unfortunately, the project was frozen due to a lack of funding. Thank you for watching the video up to this point. If you enjoyed it, Please like, leave a comment, and subscribe.